You just got Haluigi. The Super Mario Bros. movie has finally been released. And so have we. After a long wait full of fear, excitement, confusion, disappointment, and hype, and certain demonetizable emotions, we finally have the full movie, and to say this has been a divisive release is putting it lightly. When you have something that was universally considered a failure before we had a decent look at it, suddenly making a huge comeback with promising footage and a genius marketing campaign, sky high expectations everywhere you looked, then releasing to a mediocre Rotten Tomatoes score, yeah I could see this pot stirring from a mile away. There was a lot riding on the Mario movie, a lot of people's expectations were extremely high, mine included. It's not often you get a video game movie that's above average, let alone actually resembles the franchise it's based on. It had everything going for it, despite some controversy surrounding its casting, to the point where that ended up being better marketing for the film than whatever Illumination spent billions of dollars organizing. Do these guys run a blood diamond mining operation somewhere? Like, how do you afford this? Regardless, I went and saw the Mario movie on opening day, and honestly, it's pretty fun. But, before watching the movie, I originally wanted this to be a simple little review, giving my thoughts on what I thought was a movie with a painfully average story, but with something that would be immensely enjoyable to anyone with passing knowledge of the Mario franchise. However, I am now much more interested in giving my thoughts on the film, and talking about the flame wars that have been started over its release. People being up in arms about the critics giving it a lower than expected score, how valid a lot of the criticism is, and hypocrisy I've seen stemming from plenty of people involved, and why everyone should probably, I don't know, chill out. I wasn't expecting to come out of the Super Mario Bros. movie with an idea for a bigger video, but the divisive reactions to this movie have been very entertaining and inspiring, so 3, 2, 1, let's go. Going into the Mario movie, I was expecting something that was relatively light on story. I was mainly expecting the film to be a fun, lovingly made film with plenty of references to the games, then it was mainly going to be enjoyed by people who were already fans of the Mario franchise. And yet, it seems I was right on the money with that. In terms of honouring the property it's based on, this is the best video game adaptation we've ever had. This world, the character designs, the, well, everything, it's all one-to-one -one with Super Mario. This is a Super Mario game brought to life in pretty much every single way. The animation is absolutely gorgeous, it's some of the most vibrant creative and visually appealing 3D animation I've seen in years. It's oozing with personality and the iconic whimsy and imagination that comes packaged with any Mario title. The lighting is striking, the characters are expressive, and each frame is filled with so much detail. And I don't mean the usual Pixar, oh we added 5% more detail on this character's hairline in the previous movie. Like there's a lot of things going on in the background and so many cute references to Mario's history packed in nearly every scene. It's breathtaking to look at without being overwhelming. They got Koji Kondo working on the soundtrack so you know this is going to be an absolutely glorious sounding film. So many iconic tracks from the games were brought to life with new arrangements and a heavenly sounding orchestra. And the soundtrack will actually be available at some point, much to Nintendo's annoyance I assume. They even threw in the DK rap for Donkey Kong, which was absolutely delightful, until I found out they didn't credit Grant Kirkhope in the credits. Yeah, not a fan of this. Don't cram fan service into your film if you aren't gonna bother with credit. Grant made the best, worst song in video game history and you won't even mention his name. Back on track, even the sound design is great, throwing in recognizable sound effects from the games without it being distracting. I'm not immediately pulled out of the film when I hear the Koopa sound when Mario crushes the Koopa and causes a fatal car accident. This being said, still wasn't a fan of the many copyrighted songs they threw into the film, and this is clearly some of Illumination's DNA sipping into the film like a sludgy sewage drain. You have one of the most legendary video game composers of all time on standby. Nah, just throw in Take On Me, that'll be fine. <laughs> He's constantly took me out of the film. The movie plays around with the characterization of these long-established cardboard cutouts, because let's be honest, the cast of Mario barely have any personality aside from being strictly two-dimensional, unless they're either in an RPG or go by Princess Daisy. And I think it works for the most part. Mario is very much a vanilla everyman, but has that fish-out-of-water quality that makes him likable to watch. Peach takes a page out of the old Nintendo Power comics, even if she does border on being too similar to Daisy at times. Toad is actually a character. I could go on. The only two characters who seem to be similar to their game counterparts are Luigi and Bowser. Bowser's personality definitely channels how he acts in the RPGs, so that's cool. The voice cast is really giving it their all most of the time. Obviously, Jack Black stole the show, but everyone, even Chris Pratt as Mario, was fairly enjoyable, even if some lines are phoned in. In general, if you're a Mario fan, this is going to be an extremely fun movie that's easy to watch and constantly honors the games every chance it gets. However, despite me being satisfied with what the movie ended up being, and I'd still recommend you watch it, 
it, I still left the film feeling somewhat disappointed in a few areas. I wasn't expecting a great story from Mario, the series that notoriously has no story worth talking about unless it's, again, an RPG. And many of the people saying the lack of story will be a bad thing for Mario fans are incredibly out of touch. But that being said, even though I expected very little from the story, I was still taken aback by how there's really just nothing here. When people say this movie has no story, they're not being overdramatic. This has to be the most vanilla, low-stakes, risk-free story they could have possibly told. And it's nothing new for Mario, but that's the thing. It's nothing new. When people say this had a light story, I thought it would have at least had something in the way of world building, or expand some things from the games, or even have some actual character moments. The whole point of a movie is to be a visual story. A cinematic experience is more than just bright lights and fun action sequences. There needs to be a soul somewhere. I still enjoyed this film. But there are so many missed opportunities here that could have made this a genuinely great movie on top of being a good adaptation. Mario has no story, but that doesn't mean a film, something that relies on a story, cannot be critiqued over it. Like Bowser steals the superstar at the start of the film, and obviously fans of the games are going to know it's the superstar, but what that means in the context of the film isn't explained. I thought from the trailers that Bowser was going to go around collecting a bunch of these from different kingdoms to build some sort of super weapon, but no, he just grabs the one that's for some reason being guarded by the Snow Kingdom. Then he makes his way over to the Mushroom Kingdom where the plot begins and becomes about as simple as Mario and Peach going on an adventure to stop Bowser and save Luigi with no major turning points. Elements of the games are just a given here, like the power-ups and floating blocks, which in one way is accurate, but it doesn't translate well into an actual story as you're given no explanation or background on how any of this works in the context of the world. It just looks cool. But I could have potentially overlooked the paper-thin plot if the movie did something new with these long-established characters, but it doesn't. And that's my main issue of the film because characters are incredibly important when it comes to getting you to care, and the film does actually attempt to have a few character moments and tries to develop a few of its characters, so it's clear that they were trying. But just when you think they're going to pace themselves and take a break for a meaningful character moment, they immediately cut back to the action with no resolution or any build-up. So when Mario and Luigi have their defining hero moments at the end of the film, it doesn't feel like they've grown into this role naturally. Especially not Luigi, who's shockingly absent for the majority of the film. Despite the film's title, he's only around at the beginning to establish his bond with Mario before being locked away until the end. The only moment where they really slow down and let the characters breathe happens around 30 minutes in and attempts to explore Princess Peach's backstory and strengthen her connection to Mario as being the only human in the Mushroom Kingdom, but it's paper thin and doesn't contribute to anything meaningful. So while the film is incredibly enjoyable, it's not really that good as a film. Like, this doesn't even qualify as having the basic fundamentals of storytelling. It just doesn't have a story, nor any actual character development. Again, not a major problem problem from Mario, but you should always expect more effort in these areas for a more cinematic experience. There's more depth to the story of the original 90s movie than this, which is a far worse film, do not misunderstand, but it still has more of a story than this movie does, even if it's awful. Actually, you know what this movie reminds me of? The original Sonic movie, or the Sonic OVA. It's a light-hearted and fun film that's very accurate to the games and has great animation, at least for its time, but in terms of story and character developments, there's nothing really developed beyond a vanilla level. Granted, the Sonic OVA does have actual stakes and a substantially more interesting story than the Mario movie, but I find the two to be very comparable. Speaking of Sonic, there's been a large debate surrounding the Sonic movies in comparison to the Mario movie, because of course there is. A lot of people switched up on the Sonic movies the moment we got the first trailer for the Mario movie, and people started being far more critical of Sonic for not including a ton of elements from the games, on top of being a live-action hybrid, giving it far less creative freedom when it came to visuals and how it was able to reference and honour the franchise it was based on. I can't say these are entirely unfounded complaints. I would have greatly preferred an animated Sonic movie that adapted the games the same way the Mario movie did, but what I think a lot of people are forgetting is that references don't automatically mean a movie is better. It makes for a more accurate adaptation and satisfies the fans more, but in terms of overall quality, your movie can't just be backed up by being accurate. It has to also be watchable and enjoyable as a film. That's the balance that people have always struggled with. Now, this is probably going to be a hot take, so bear with me here, but while I believe that the Mario movie is a very fun time and the best adaptation we've had for a video game based on visuals alone, I think both of the Sonic movies are better as films. Sonic doesn't have as many references to the games, but what it does have is a story with a coherent structure, moments where it's 
slows down to let the characters develop and digest the plot, all culminating in an action-packed climax that feels earned. They are nowhere close to being great films, the story is still relatively light and the characters aren't extremely compelling, but the Sonic movies manage to be heartwarming and get you to care for the characters without rushing anything. It's very strange that Mario is the film of rapid fire, constantly moving pacing, and Sonic is the film that knows when to take a break. If the Sonic movies completely ditched the live action stuff for an animated look, did away with the human characters and focused solely on telling similar stories to the movies we got, while being visually coherent with the franchise, I don't think there would be much of a contest over which one ended up being better. I'm not just saying this as a Sonic fan, I'm saying this because I wish the Mario movie had the same effort placed into its plot and characters that the Sonic movie did. And the Sonic movies aren't even great stories, that's just the bare minimum I expected going into the Mario movie. Overall, most aren't going to be bothered by this stuff, they're here to see a faithful adaptation of a video game franchise and that's fine. The movie we got was fine, but filled with a lot of love and care for the fans. I recommend it, it's a decent film, but all I can think about is how this had the potential to be really great. A day before the release of the Super Mario Bros. movie, critics were finally allowed to post their reviews of the film, and to say that this caused quite a stir is putting it lightly. Right out of the gate, the Mario movie landed a 48% rating on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic, and people flipped their sh**. <laughs> now reactions online when the Mario movie had its premiere were fairly positive to begin with, mostly because a lot of the people giving their thoughts right out of the gate were passionate fans of the franchise, and because there was a review embargo in place as with any movie. So most people couldn't express their full thoughts on the film until the embargo day had passed, and they could post their reviews online. So as you would expect, seeing a large number of positive responses to the film only a day prior be completely contrasted by many notable and professional critics disliking the film would have been a shock for some. And while the Rotten Tomatoes score is a little higher now, mainly floating around 55%, that's still a rotten score according to their definitions. Now I'm going to break down a lot of things here because there are a lot of moving parts to this little drama, if you can even call it that, and also because I think it demonstrates a lot of immaturity in how people online react to criticism as well as a lot of hypocrisy and not understanding how sites like Rotten Tomatoes work. People see the percentage for films on Rotten Tomatoes as a strong indicator of a film's quality. So if something has like 45% or something, people will see it as a 4.5 out of 10 or something along those lines. Not helping is the site itself, which classifies films as being either rotten or fresh depending on the percentage of critics that like a film. Now I always find serious backlash to Rotten Tomatoes scores to be pretty childish most of the time. The existence of RT is to calculate the percentage of chosen critics that thought positively about a movie they reviewed. It is not a website that hands out review scores. So if it's just a website that calculates percentages of people who like the film, why do so many people get incredibly upset when a movie they were excited for ends up getting a rotten score? Well, it honestly just comes down to fanboy mentality mixed with not understanding how the website works. When you feel incredibly strong feelings towards something, it can be hard to see that a lot of people don't agree. Especially if a large percentage showing people don't agree is plastered front and centre of the film when you search it up. A lot of people use RT to guide them on what film is worth their time, and the people behind a lot of mainstream movies will often slap the positive RT percentage onto the advertising of their film, further inflating its actual importance. So it becomes a bit of a dangerous mix when people act like the percentage is a solid review score given by a well-known website that influences a lot of people's decisions. RT is a very flawed website and people shouldn't be taking the percentages so seriously. It's just a percentage. If you want to know if you're going to like something, find critics that you usually agree with and enjoy listening to and read their reviews. And if you aren't bothered by reviews in general and want to go in to get your own thoughts, don't whine about what other people think of the movie. And that's another thing, a lot of people who say they don't care about what the critics think of something are usually saying it in defiance of their opposing opinion. Again, many people use Rotten Tomatoes as a legitimate way for them to choose what films they should watch, so it immediately creates a level of bias whether you like a movie or not, as people will often celebrate when a movie has a high percentage from the critics and use it as a way to validate their own thoughts on the movie. Then you have the inverse reaction where the percentage is lower than expected, and those same people who would have been celebrating if the film was widely beloved by critics will start saying that the critics don't matter, and that it's the audience score that matters. Not everyone falls into these categories obviously, but it feels like a lot of people's reactions to the Mario movie's critical reception have just been overly defensive and out of a sense of insecurity. No one's stopping you from enjoying or praising this film, but further legitimizing these reviews by complaining about them or giving them attention, and then arrogantly proclaiming they don't matter 
better one second later is aggressively stupid. Not all the criticism for the movie is warranted and we'll get into that, but I'm getting pretty tired of people throwing a hissy fit just because people don't like a movie they enjoyed. Giving so much artificial purpose to other people's thoughts and then acting like they aren't affected. Bringing up how Cuties, a film that most people including myself find absolutely revolting, has a higher percentage than the Mario movie, doesn't delegitimize the website and it isn't the own you think it is. I guarantee you that barely any of the people who reviewed Cuties overlap with the people who reviewed the Mario movie. They are completely different films. Stop treating Rotten Tomatoes like it's an independent entity. It's not. I've also seen a lot of people write up some shockingly bad defenses of the film in the face of mostly justified criticism. Now there's nothing wrong with calling out bad faith criticism and arguing against things you disagree with when it comes to the film, but I've seen a lot of people try and argue and give the Mario movie a pass for things that they would 100% dig into other films for, especially films made by Illumination. As said, I really like the Mario movie, so I hope you don't take it as offensive when I say that the majority of defenses I've seen for this film f***ing suck. You already know people have pushed back against the lack of story critique, and yeah, it's Mario. That part of the film isn't gonna bother most people, it didn't bother me that much, I understand that one. The rest of the defenses suck. I've seen the usual suspects whip out the it's just for kids excuse, as if that somehow justifies a kids film being a bad kids film and maintaining the standard of kids films being bad on purpose, which isn't true and should not be the standard. There are hundreds of good kids films out there, thank you very much, and I believe the entertainment that kids watch should be good. It's just a kids film is not an excuse to accept mediocrity. I've seen a fair few people defend the movie not really explaining how anything works in the Mushroom Kingdom by saying the games never did, flat out ignoring the issues that come up when you translate gameplay elements into a streamlined narrative, and don't bother explaining anything. The pacing of the film actively handicapping the impact of many of the film's important scenes that are trying to go for an emotional impact have been weirdly caught in the crossfire of the it's just for kids defense, with people acting like expecting a film to do the bare f***ing minimum is somehow Scorsese tier writing, and that you shouldn't expect this much from Super Mario. Kids films are not exempt from being thematically complex or even having natural character developments, and even when you're not expecting thematic complexity from Mario, you should at least expect the film to have the bare necessities down pat, even if the execution is clumsy. Mario likes many of the things that makes a story a story, and criticism directed at those elements while acknowledging that the film is fun should be welcomed and understood. I don't understand the insane pushback people have towards any criticism of this film, and that's just defending it from words people have said. Don't even get me started on the people that have gone out of their way to tear others apart for critiquing the film. Whether these people write something that's good faith or bad faith, it will never justify absolutely tearing into them because they didn't see the same artistry in the Bing Bing Wahoo Man movie that you did. There was like one guy who wrote something vaguely negative about the film back when all the positive first impressions were coming around, and naturally because he was the only one with something mildly negative to say, even stating he really wanted to like the film, he got absolutely dogpiled. This absolute storm of poor behaviour has been fascinating to watch. No one should have expected this film to be a masterpiece, but turning around and suddenly treating it like it is one just to dunk on some guy who didn't even put up a full review of the film is just gross, honestly. And let's not forget the people who very quickly jumped on the bandwagon and turned criticism of the movie into a culture war issue. Because that's exactly what we needed to quell the fire, wasn't it? Not a single thing in these titles is true and these people are grifting off a bad situation for your money. It gets so tiring seeing these situations happen again and again with a new film every year. The horse ain't dead if its soul transfers to a new domain every time. It's a toxic mix of people who don't know how criticism works, don't know how one of the most popular websites on the internet works, and don't know how to restrain themselves before jumping some random guy for no reason. I'll admit, a lot of the critiques directed at the film, like the words people say, not the fact that they like or disliked it, is very hit or miss from what I found. I usually don't like tearing into other people's reasoning for liking or disliking a film, at least not anymore. I'm way past that level of pettiness, but going into a lot of the reviews for the film, I do get the sense that not many people know what they're talking about. But this only further adds to the hellfire, because when the criticism itself does have errors that can be refuted, it's only going to give the angry mob more of a reason to keep tearing its way through everything. So you have critics simply not liking a film, confusion generated over a literal percentage of some people enjoying something, people grandstanding over the opinions of others after grifting over them for outrage points, outrage farmers joining in on the crusade, people being harassed for having negative thoughts on the film, critics being harassed for posting negative reviews, the reviews themselves are largely questionable which further fuels the unjustified harassment, I think you get the picture, it's a mess. At the end of the day, the Mario movie is going to be a hit, it's already making illumination a ton of bank and it's not even the weekend yet. And overall, let's not gloss over the fact that this is clearly more than just a corporate product. This was made by people who clearly cared a lot for the Mario franchise. Just looking at the film for more than a second will tell you that. And the fact they still came out with an 
entertaining film loaded with fan service without any kind of shame, knowing exactly what it is and what it wanted to do is pretty admirable. I recommend you watch the film if you haven't, but it's important to recognize that it should be critiqued as with any other film, especially kids entertainment. Only a few months ago, people were heaping praise on Puss in Boots The Last Wish for being thematically complex and narratively excellent despite how much it seemed like a dumb kids film to many. Not asking for that kind of level from Mario, obviously, but this double standard in regards to kids entertainment needs to stop. This whole fiasco could have been easily avoided had people been more respectful of others' thoughts. That's as simple as I can put it. It is elementary crap that you are taught as a child, yet it will always happen when it comes to anything online. It's not just a Mario movie problem.